In this podcast, we're going to have a look at some of the different ways you can go about routing your signals within Max MSP. There's three main objects we're going to have a look at. One of them is the G switch and G switch 2. One of them is the gate object and the last one is the switch object. The two G switch objects here are probably the most easiest to use because it's a visual representation of what the object is actually doing. So if we take a closer look at both of these you've got the first two inputs on both objects control where how the signal is getting routed and then if you have a look here you can see exactly where the signal is going. I've just added a couple of message boxes into the first inlet of the gate so you can get a bit of a visual representation of what's going on when the signals get routed. So that's the first route and if you click on the one that's the second route. As you can see the zero and the one just flicks between the two. You don't have to use message boxes you can also use a number box. I'm now just going to plug some data into these boxes just to show you how it works and I'm going to go back to the calculator tutorial where we were using the plus object. So with the first one we'll have a number going in and whichever one of these numbers is selected so wherever the number is getting routed we're, is going to determine whether the number is added to 5 or subtracted from 5. Okay, let's lock the patch and give this a test. So, at the moment, we're getting rooted to the plus. So, in this number box here, 10. So, 10 plus 5 should be 15. And as you can see, this box on this side hasn't changed at all. But now, if we route it through to the subtraction side, and say we're typing 20. Okay, that wasn't a very good example. 25. The answer is obviously 20. And again, this side now hasn't been affected. And this one here does exactly the same, but the opposite way round. So, as you can see on this side, the function or the thing you want to happen is at the bottom. But whereas this one, the uh, two root changes are both at the top. So, whatever you want to happen or whatever you want to switch between needs to be at the top up here. These second two objects are exactly the same as these two here but without a visual representation. Um, there is an advantage of using these two. Let's just get rid of one of this. The advantage being that whereas these two only have two inputs or two outputs, the gate and the switch object, you can add arguments and have as many outs and ins as you want. So you still, on the first input of each one, you still select which outlet or input you want but you can have eight additions for example on the bottom or eight functions on the top that you want to select between. I've just made a couple of quick examples just to show you how the gate and the switch object work. So here you've got your gate object with an argument of four so you've got four outputs and I've just used an extra divide and multiply to show you an example of this. So Select 1, so that'll be the first output, and 50, add 10, 60. And as you can see, again, none of the others are changed. What if we want to multiply? So, fourth gate output, uh, let's go for 67 times 10. Let's just make that a bit better, there you go. So you can see it's multiplied 67 by 10 and not touched anything else. So the switch, again, works in the opposite direction. You've got your first input, so it'll be adding 10 to whatever number I put up here. 
and it comes out down the bottom. Uh, third input, we want to divide by 10, so there you go, and the output is 2.